Okay, guys, um, I wanted to clarify a few things about the gas exchange system um, and just make sure that we're understanding kind of the structure of everything that's taking place here. So I want to just, again, reinforce um, that everything's on my website. I'm, you know, frantically working to get this updated as much as possible. You'll even see that I'm starting to make separate pages for the different systems, but for now, everything is still hosed or housed. Sorry, on the uh, COVID nineteen page here, um, and you know, a lot of you guys have been asking, like, what the heck does our project have to include? And again, these are some of the the IB statements whoops, that are going to be addressed. Um, so these are definitely things that are going to have to be incorporated into your project in some way, shape, or form. Um, these are each of those IB course statements. So yes, they're very detailed. Um, that is the nature of IB biology. Um, I want to remind you that there's an online textbook available here. I highly recommend that if you're struggling to understand a concept, please address, the, address it through the textbook. Um, in each of these, I give you textbook pages for finding it. This is also um, a really good place to come to that's really similar to this stuff here. But um, these are the things um, that have to be identified in your um, project that is going to be your culminating project at the end that you're all working toward. Um, so down here, you know, I've started to break down um, those SARS-CoV-2 rundowns. And you guys were to have taken notes over that so that we have a really good understanding of um, what's going on with SARS-CoV-2. I want to show you um, at the end of this video. And these are going to buy the macrophages. Okay, so these proteins are made by the macrophages. So and that here, induces that inflammatory response. Up here, so let's come give, back here to the very beginning. Where we talked about the things we need to I kind of give an overview here. This is what we're going to be covering for the rest of the year. We have started off with covering the immune system. We've started off covering the immune system. Now we're moving into gas exchange. Can you predict where we're going next? We're going to look at proteins and enzymes. Then we're going to be learning about DNA, its structure, what it does, ultimately tying this into metabolic pathways and medicines. So, um, this video is really helpful. I think it'll be difficult for you to understand at this point, but it's a great introduction. And then here's the information necessary for the immune response. And then here we are down at the gas exchange. So the gas exchange unit description, it's a little short video I made, um, maybe not in depth enough, but please make sure you are looking at these links. These are the gas exchange unit statements um, and so these are the unit statements that the IB is requiring you to know. Um, we will be addressing all of these um, throughout class time. The biggest one that's not going to get emphasized as much is going to be emphysema, but you're still going to be um, required to know that. So I won't address this statement as much, but you're still going to need to know it. Um, and that's why I provide a reading here for you, and it's also a brief little blip in the textbook. Um, okay, so then I gave you the gas exchange note packet, which you can see here on the right hand side of my screen. Um, this isn't required. You do not have to do the note packet. I am providing these to you for um, a guideline and help for those of you that don't feel comfortable taking notes individually yet. Um, I recommend them because I know what needs to be addressed. However, you could feel very comfortable making mind maps or Cornell notes or however you've decided to take notes. Um, those I had a little technical difficulty there, um, but what I want to just make sure you guys see is that um, the notes are all here on my website. I tried to make them much easier to find um, as opposed to Google Slides. Um, but this presentation starts off with a lung dissection. And as you watch through this lung dissection, what you're going to ultimately see is um, that this guy goes through and talks exactly about these parts. I'll quickly address the main parts. So he comes in and lungs does a bunch of talking here. It's to be pumped by the heart. Um, and we can find that just behind the lungs. 
So when you breathe it... So I'm just going to really quickly here um, define for you pharynx. So the pharynx is the membrane that, can, um, that connects the nose and the mouth to the esophagus. Um, and then he's going to come here. I'm going to find the quick part. So here's where he talks about the larynx. And attached, we can find two tubes heading down from it. This one here goes down towards the lungs. This is called the windpipe or trachea. And here we have the esophagus. Now you want your air to go down the trachea to your lungs and your food to go through the esophagus. This is called an epiglottis. When you swallow, it closes over the top, blocking the trachea and preventing any food from going down. And so instead, your food just passes in the esophagus. So now we're going to remove the voice box. So inside here, we can see a structure which pinches together. And those are the vocal cords. So the, um, the larynx, it's the route blocked by the epiglottis during swallowing, um, is the voice box. And you're starting to see here how he's kind of showing how that voice box works, um, really just knowing what it is. He's already talked about the trachea, which is the windpipe, essentially. Um, that's how you get the passage of air to the lungs. And he's about to move on. No, I didn't know it's a problem. This is great. Now, whenever you want to make a sound, um, so he's going to move on just here. Vibrate towards the lungs. But what we can see here are some rings of cartilage. So these rings of cartilage help to keep the windpipe open, giving the air a clear passage going down to the lungs. So the rings of cartilage, as I've written here, helps keep the windpipes open. Okay, um, and then that smooth muscle is what's going to help um, to do the contraction of breathing. Okay, um, I'm going to show, so he's going to jump on, so he talks about a bunch of things here. So there we go. Here, going into the lungs. So let's cut down one of these tubes. So the bronchi like the branches are the, tree. these just branches show you right smaller here. And smaller um, becoming are the branches and off of the, the trachea. Okay. And, right and then, then these bronchioles are going to further break down into the smallest connection from the bronchi and the alveoles. And the alveoli is the place where the gas is exchanged between your body and the air. And the alveoli are the places where the uh, gases exchange between your body and the air. So we're looking at the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Um, go ahead and make sure you go through and label this just to get yourself familiar with the geography of the respiratory system. Um, I've given another diagram here that gives a little bit more breakdown of what each of these things are. Um, and then we've already begun the discussion of the alveolus. Um, so you can also see another kind of look into the respiratory system there. But the alveolus, as it says here, um, it's made of a single layer of flattened cells. Um, we've already talked about this. We've got our type 1 and our type 2. But let's look a little bit more in depth at the type 1. So type 1, as you can see here, I've shown um, the structure of them are the flattened thin cells. So these are flat thin cells um, that line the alveolus. And again, I'm just getting that right here. Um, they have a really great surface area to volume ratio, which decreases the amount of distance um, that gases have to travel. Why is that important? Because this cell is responsible for gas exchange. Type 2 pneumocytes. Again, we talked about that in that very first video about SARS-CoV-2. These are rounded cells. that are sporadic. Remember, I shared with you, 
they're only about 5% of the cells in the alveoli. Um, their function, as we've addressed, is to create surfactant. And that surfactant does a couple of things. It helps um, in the dissolving of gases. And again, that's not the type 2 pneumocyte. It's the surfactant that's helping in that dissolving. And then it also keeps the alveoli or alveolus um, from sticking together in exhalation. So when you think about it, your alveoli are expanding, and he shows this in that lung dissection video, but your alveoli are expanding, and then when they come back together, they're collapsing together. And remember, we talked about that layer of water that could easily create those um, uh, uh, cohesive bonds, um, the, hydro or the hydrogen bonds causing them to stick together. And if you don't have surfactant, you get those bonds, those hydrogen bonds forming. Okay, so this next part is really just kind of a fill in the blank, um, but ventilation, oh, so these are the micrographs of uh, types of pneumocytes. Um, you guys can review those, but I just want to make it clear, these fill in the blank parts, I just wanted to give a quick overview because we're going to do this in much more depth. But gas exchange is the uptake of molecular oxygen from the environment and the discharge of carbon dioxide to the environment. Um, so this is distinct from cellular respiration, but it is linked to it. So cell respiration is the metabolic process that uses oxygen and produces CO2. Um, so uh, yeah, and that produces ATP for energy. And again, I'd like you guys to go through in more depth this diagram. We're going to process that when we get to um, metabolic processes. So gas exchange, that's what number two is here. So the diffusion of gases, so oxygen and carbon dioxide um, across the respiratory membrane. Um, which I've kind of indicated are the alveoli in humans, gills and fish, and then oxygen diffuses, carbon dioxide diffuses um, from the blood to the air and the lungs. Gas exchange also occurs in the capillaries of the tissues, which I've shown a diagram of there on that slide. So this is that diagram that's going to show the capillaries and the tissues. I'm going to slow down really quickly here on this image because I just want you to see that, okay, our tissue cells, whatever that tissue is, whether it be a muscle, whether it be a heart cell, whatever it is, it has to get rid of the byproduct of cellular respiration. Again, I know we don't know the steps to cellular respiration, but we know that we breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. So our carbon dioxide is unloaded into the capillaries where it does this reaction, water, carbonic acid, bicarbonate ion, to where it is then able to be exhaled um, through our um, exhalation process. Um, so in humans, gas exchange happens by diffusion at the alveoli and the capillaries. I'm about to run out of time here, so I'm going to make another video in just a second. Um, but then our first part is that uh, we have to have a concentration gradient of gases. Remember, things move from high to low in passive diffusion. I'm going to pause here um, just because uh, we can kind of finish up. This process is called ventilation. And I'm going to pick up with another video here. Um, please try and make sure that you get through at least these notes by next class. Okay.